Okay, you guys, so we have decided that we are going to conquer our mornings. We have committed to waking up one hour before we have to actually get up. So the question that I'm getting is, okay, I'm up, what do I do? So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the four things that I do before I start my to-do list. Because we know that everything is about being in the right mindset. And I know that so many times that we look at ourselves in our life and we, we think of it as the glass, glass is half empty. We think of it as there's so many things that are going wrong and I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted. I'm gonna help you guys try to change your mindset and look at it in a different way. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about that. Success is something that you attract by the person that you become. And everything that you're doing in your one hour is making you a better version of yourself. It is just allowing you to be the person that God has created you to be and you are honing in on your talents and the abilities that he's given you so that you can be a better person because you know that you have a very small amount of time for yourself and the rest of your day is given to other thing, things and other people. I'm gonna tell you guys what I do. It has not changed. Everything has been the same. Now that you've decided what time you're getting up, we're gonna be able to tailor make your schedule based upon what your goals are. So for instance, I'm a business owner like I told you guys. I work about six hours a day. Two and a half hours are in the morning time. I've decided that that's how much time I have to carve out in the morning in order for me to get done what I have to get done throughout the day. I've had to tweak it. There's been times where I'm like, okay, an hour's not enough for me. An hour and a half wasn't enough for me. So I had to do two and a half hours and it works perfect. I want you to start off with one hour and let's figure out if that's the best option for you and then you can tweak it along the way if you need to. But I don't want you to feel rushed. The point is not to feel rushed. The point is to be calm and collected and to gather your thoughts so that you can have an incredible day. Okay, here's my first tip. This is what I do every single morning right when I wake up. So I get up out of bed, I go put my clothes on, I usually get my glass of pre-workout which is like 12 ounces. I start to drink that, grab my phone, and I put it on the kitchen counter because I'm not gonna sit with my phone beside me. It's way too tempting for me to start working and doing stuff and looking at messages. And by that time, I've given my entire morning over to social media, and that is not what we're doing here. So my phone stays on the kitchen counter. I walk myself over to the living room. I sit down, and for 10 minutes, I'm in silence. And this is a time for me to focus and for me to pray. So I spend 10 minutes in complete silence. I'm actually talking, but I'm not doing anything. My mind isn't going to my to-do list. I'm not working yet. It's honestly just about worshiping in that moment that I have to myself where I can focus and just thank God for what he's done. If you want to immediately reduce your stress level, then you need to be in silence. You need to start your morning in silence. If you want to sit there and drink your cup of coffee, drink your cup of coffee. This is not a time to, to think about your act, day's activities or what you did yesterday or what you've got going on this weekend. That is not that time. There's so much chaos in this world. We have got to sit down and just be quiet. This is probably the opposite of what you're used to because usually when you sit in silence, your mind just starts thinking and going different places. So it's gonna take a little while for you to just train yourself to just sit there and relax. So write this down. First thing I want you to do is you're just in silence, silence and prayer. So for the first 10 minutes, you can meditate, you can sit there and do nothing, but silence. Number two, I wanna to talk to you guys about affirmations. And I know that I had given you guys a video this morning and I wanted to prepare you kind of for what it is that I talk about. So the second thing that I do is I visualize and I talk out my affirmations. Now, Affirmations, it is the repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. How many times do we tell ourselves that we're not good at something, that somebody else is always better, that we are not good moms, that we did this wrong, that we've screwed up on this, that we're not a good, a good employee, that we're not the best wife that we could be. So many times we tell ourselves all these different things and what we focus on, those things that we focus on expand. We start to believe those things. And I talk about affirmations and visualization. Affirmation, I learned this when I started my own business because if you read through the Miracle Morning of Network Marketers, they have a ton of interviews of very successful, well-known people in this book. 
and they talk about their morning routine. And every single one of these people start their morning off with affirmations. So I am a good mom. I am an amazing wife. I am an awesome leader to my team. I am an incredible child of God. I do not speak out of hate and anger, but I speak out of love and truth and comfort and peace. And I talk gently to my kids. Those are things that you say, those are affirmations. And when you start to say those things, you start to believe those things and you act upon those things. You act as if that's what you are because it is what you are. So affirmations are so important. So I had you guys write down your affirmations. I have it written down in my notebook and I read that every single morning because I, and I say I am, and I, I, I verbalize what it is that I am because I know that I am that. So many times we tell ourselves that we're not this, that we're not that, and it's debilitating and it makes us feel like we're less of a person, less of an individual. And I know that you're probably thinking affirmations just like, stupid and I thought the same thing until I realized that so many successful people do it and that's probably why they've been so successful is that they have told themselves that they are. So I want you guys to look back over your affirmations that you wrote down earlier today and I want you to write them down on your, on your notebook and I want every single morning for you to read that. Read it three and four and five times and I want it to get into your brain. I want you to instill it in what you do every day because I know and that's gonna help you with your morning. Number three is visualize. I wanna to talk to you guys about if time or money or resources were no option, what would you want? And forget about being practical or logic or limits. What would you have? What would you do? And who would you become? And that's what visualizing is. Visualizing is you visualize your major goals in life. You think of them as if they've already taken place, as if you have gotten that big promotion or you have helped your family get out of debt or you've been able to come home and be a stay-at-home mom with your family. Visualize what those are, your biggest dreams, your biggest aspirations, your biggest reason, your biggest passion on why you feel like you were made for this. I want you to think about that and then I want you to write them down. I visualize my life every single day. Let me give you an example. When I first started my business almost four years ago, our company gives away, actually you earn a free trip every single year. And I remember the first year I was thinking, they were talking about our next trip was gonna be a cruise. And I was thinking, I have to be on that cruise. And I was able to bring my husband with me. I want, to be, I want my husband and I to be able to experience this cruise. We've never been on a cruise before. We hadn't been on any awesome trip like that since our honeymoon, which was 10 years ago. I said, I will be on that cruise. Every single day, I looked at that and I said, I wanna be on that cruise. I'm gonna be on that cruise. My husband and I were gonna go on this cruise. We are gonna earn this cruise. And guess what, you guys? I honestly believe that it was because every single morning I thought about it and I could taste it and I worked as if we were going on that cruise. And then guess what? We got to go on that cruise. And it was life-changing and amazing things happened there and God showed up and Matt was able to do a church service on this big cruise that was chartered, chartered by our company. It was beyond what I ever could have imagined. But I honestly think it dated back to when I started visualizing that every single day, every morning. So I would affirm that I was good and I was awesome and God had created me amazing and I could do a lot of things and then I would visualize what I wanted for my life. And then I think those two things together is what helped me to accomplish that goal. I know that every single morning I thought about it and I visualized it and it was one of the best things because I, I was able to actually attain what it was that I had been visualizing. So you guys, visualize. This is getting your mindset in the right place so that you can become a better person. The next thing that I do is I read about a chapter or about 10 minutes of personal development. Now, personal development, you're thinking, okay, well, I don't need any self-help books. And that's great because I didn't feel like I needed self-help books either. But what I did realize is that I would love to read books on parenting. I want to read books on leadership. I want to read books on how to better my financing. And so for instance, these are some of my favorite that I just happened to um, get. So this is Start by John A. Cuff. This is an amazing um, business book that I've read and I try to do about 12 a year. That's my goal. Um, Never Say No. That's a great book that um, that's on parenting. 
I love anything John Maxwell. Anything John Maxwell on leadership. I've read almost all of his books on leadership. The Bait of Satan. This is when somebody has offended you. It talks about that, which is helped me through so much of my early Christian life. Chase the Lion. This is the one I'm reading right now by Mark Batterson. This is a faith-based book, but it's also... Um, He's a businessman, so it has incredible business tools in here. Draw the Circle, this um, by Mark Batterson. It's funny. I've read this a couple times. Awesome devotional. This is, so like reading these books, you have to understand, missing, you are missing out on unlimited supply of knowledge from the most successful and the most brilliant people in the world if you do not read. If you don't open up your mind and fill it with things that people are really good at. Jesus Calling, maybe you guys have read this. This is probably the first book that I started reading. It's a daily devotional, but let me tell you something. It, it rocked my face off, all of that. So whether you'd like to transform your marriage, whether you'd like to learn about your finances, I have Dave Ramsey's Entre Leadership right here that I've read. Um, whether you want to learn a new language, whether you want to go to school for counseling, there is gonna be a book that you can read, that you can learn more about. You are not reading a self-help book because you need self-help. You're reading a self-help book because you want to be the smartest person on your craft that you can be. Think about it. If your book is 20 chapters long, you're going to be done with your book in 20 days. Can you imagine that? How many books could you read a year if you had 20 chapters in, in every single book? A lot. You could probably read a lot. And the last thing that I do, so I've done, I've done my moment of silence. I've done my affirmations and I've done my visual, visualization. I have now read 10 minutes of personal development, or usually it's about a chapter. So I'm only like 30 minutes into my morning uh, already. So I mean, all this stuff can be done rather quickly. Then by the time that I have done all of this, I have pretty much drank all of my pre-workout. My body's feeling good. It's about uh, 4.45 in the morning and I'm ready to go crash my workout. And so you are already succeeding at something before your day even starts if you go and do some type of exercise. And that is whatever you want it to be. It can be 25 jumping jacks and 25 push-ups. It can be running around the block. It can be running up your apartment steps, up and down the apartment steps five times. It can be going to the gym. But you want to pick something that you're gonna stick with. If you know that you love going to the gym, but it is a snowstorm outside, and you probably don't think you're gonna be able to make it to the gym every day, pick something else. Pick an at-home workout that you can do in your living room or your garage, or pick a, a YouTube video that you can do really quick, but find something. The beauty of exercising in the mornings is that it already is done before your day has a chance to wear you out. So I cannot work out in the evenings anymore because it does not get done. If I have not worked out before noon, it's not gonna happen. I'm just being honest. And most of the time, when you have really, really good intentions, by the time you get home and you've already put on your, you know, you've taken off your work clothes and you're sitting on the couch, you're done. And I get it. I don't blame you for that. And that's what, that's what this book is saying. They're saying, don't try to work out at nighttime. You're not even like half awake. You're, you're tired. Your day has beaten you up. You're ready to lay down and go to sleep. And I think you should. You should have every right. But you're going to feel better about going to bed at night because you you know that you have already done that that morning. And then the last thing that I start on, and I told you guys, I do two and a half hours in the morning. The last thing that I start on is my to-do list. So I start going through my to-do list and I start marking things off. And I, by the time my kids get up, I'm already halfway through my to-do list. I've been able to work. I've been able to exercise. I've done my reading. I've done my personal development. And that's all before the sun has come up. You guys, it's going to change your life. My assignment is I want you to write down what your morning is going to look like. I want you to say, okay, from 5 o'clock to 5.10, I'm sitting in silence. From 5.10 to 5.20, I'm going to visualize. From 5.20 to 5.30, I'm going to read personal development or whatever it is. But your mindset is what's going to carry you through this and not give up on you halfway through. You've got to believe that you can do it. And visualization and affirmation is what's gonna help you get there. Tomorrow, I'm gonna show you guys a glimpse into my schedule. So you're gonna be waking up with me at four o'clock in the morning, I'm just kidding. I'll do a video. I'm gonna do a video of what my morning looks like so that you can see firsthand what happens in my house 
at 4 a.m. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.